All right, everybody, stay tuned for a quick end-of-the-year wrap-up on the BF-108 project. All right here, everybody, Paul Stutz with, with the Weeks Aircraft with the Mechanics Corner, updating progress on the BF-108. And first thing we're gonna talk about is some of the interior work. I know we talked about this in some of the other episodes, and we're trying to get the last of this interior stuff uh, to the upholstery guy uh, so we can complete this project. On that note, he did give us another finished part, which came out uh, beautifully. This is actually the rear seat uh, back support. Uh, for the airplane. You can see that came out very nice. I think we had some other episodes where we talked about the reconditioning of this back piece, uh, but it's gone to the poster. Uh, he's um, done all the proper work. Uh, Seatbelt connections are all in place, and that's another completed piece, and I'm very, very happy with it. This guy's doing a fantastic job uh, with the poster work on this airplane. Um, he has also finished the seat uh, cushions for the pilot and co-pilot seats. And so those are completed, and he's also working on some side panel pieces. So one of the last things that we have to give to him are the pilot and co-pilot seats. And these components right here actually get upholstered on this back side here. The cushions sit in the little bucket here, but the pieces here actually get stitched right to the framework uh, of the seat. So that's why I wanted to get these done. Now, these seats were not in the best condition. They were kind of banged up. And one of the biggest problems that we had with the seats is this uh, piece right back here that makes up the uh, rear back support. And originally, this was actually a piece of magnesium. This is actually the original piece that came off of here. And like all these magnesium parts that came off the airplane, uh, it's corroded. It's cracked. It's got a big crack right here. It's got a big chunk missing out of it right over here. So this AZ has to be remade or um, found. So we, we contemplated making it. We actually tried to make it, but it was a little bit complicated. It had some issues with that. Um, but I got lucky and I was actually able to find somebody that had some seat components. And he had a whole complete seat and a seat back. And from that, I was actually able to take these uh, seat uh, aluminum pieces off, which were in perfect condition, and use them on the seats that we have. I also replaced one of the bottom bucket pieces because the casting had a crack in it and there was some damage in one of the corners. So the parts that he actually gave us actually completed uh, what we had to do to the seats. Um, these sheet metal parts are actually held on by a series of uh, tubular rivets, which uh, I drilled out so I can replace it all. Um, and I had to put it back together with tubular rivets, and that's actually one right here. This is actually a semi-tubular rivet. A tubular rivet is actually hollow completely through. This is semi-tubular, and this is the only thing I could find that was close to it. And it's, again, like a, a normal rivet, but it has a special bucking bar that when you actually smash the rivet, it actually forms a little ring on the back side and holds that rivet in place. So those worked out perfectly. All the CAD-plated parts, they went to the um, plating shop, all been put back on here because these actually have to be put on before the upholstery goes on. And just to give you an idea of what it's gonna look like when it's finished, some of the chrome plating pieces, this is the adjustment handle for the seat to go back and forth. That was replated in the chrome that we talked about earlier. That's in place to kind of give you an idea of how it looks. And so making really nice progress with the seats here. Very happy, this is, was a lot of work that went into all this and uh, hopefully, uh, these are the last pieces that are going to go to him. They're going to come back to us, and the uh, upholstery should be finished. So, making good progress on that. And now let's go talk about the wing. I know in this later episodes we've been concentrating on the left wing, but things have kind of slowed down on the left wing because of some issues we have to take care of first. So let's talk about that. All right, here we are at the left wing of the 108. And, of course, we talked about... Uh, the progress we've been making on this wing over the past couple of episodes. As you can see, it doesn't look a whole lot different from what it did before. And the reason is, is we haven't been able to close up the bottom side of the airplane because there are a number of things that we have to do 
um, before that is done. And one of those things is the electrical wiring that runs through the left wing. The left wing actually has three electrical components to it. It has a wingtip light, it has a landing light, and it has a pitot tube heating element uh, that all have to be uh, rewired into the airplane. So it's a lot easier to do this before we close it up. Uh, actually, if you close it up first, you wouldn't be able to get to half of it. So we want to do all this ahead of time. Again, remember the order of assembly. And so that was the kind of task here that's slowing us down a little bit, but it's making good progress. We've got new wiring that we ran through and all the wiring on the 108 is run through a series of either flexible or rigid conduit. And you can actually see that that runs all the way from the wingtip to the butt of the wing. And of course, you can just take the wiring and just run it through there and just hook it all up and, and, and just make it simple. But again, we're trying to make it look the way it's supposed to look. And a lot of the wiring on the 108 went through a series of different uh, conduits and also sleeving and then a actual outside uh, shielding that went on top of this. Now, some of this stuff is kind of hard to find and it's, it's interesting. Sometimes you have to kind of go past looking at aviation supply shops because remember this airplane was built in the 1930s and this is a time frame when there weren't places you can go to purchase uh, aviation parts. Nowadays you have you know, all these different companies, air, aircraft spruce, where you can just open up a catalog and you can find all this stuff. But back then they didn't have all that. And a lot of electrical components that are in a, a lot of early airplanes were actually kind of automotive things that were used. So thinking outside of that box, uh, I'm trying to find some of the sleeving. And amazingly, you can actually find it. We use a lot of uh, uh, vendors called the Granger is very popular. Also, McMaster and Carr. These are companies that sell all kinds of different things. And you can find a lot of different products in there that you can use in the rebuild of old airplanes. Another company that I found that was very helpful, uh, actually Ken, uh, my coworker, he was up at Hershey, uh, Pennsylvania at a car show, and he found this company, Restoration Supply Company. And they actually specialize in very early car restoration products. And in this catalog, I was actually able to find uh, some of the original sleeving uh, that goes uh, on this wire. It was actually, originally it was like an asbestos material, but they've actually made it to look the same way, but of course they don't make it out of that same material because asbestos is uh, not a good material to be handling. Found that original uh, material, found some small sleeving, and the wire goes through this, and then once that's in place, the wiring in some areas uh, gets a uh, wire sleeve shielding and I was able to actually find that in the catalog also and with all this combined has actually made it look exactly like it did originally so all that's been put in place all of the connectors put back on again and it's interesting how they did this on the connectors uh, this is actually one that came out of another airplane this is uh, pretty common for most German airplanes they use a series of phenolic uh, connector plugs and these were actually all labeled uh, with little numbers, and they weren't stamped on, they were actually hand painted on, <laughs> which is kind of interesting. Another one is a terminal block cover right here, which has a little C8 uh, painted on it. And that was hand painted, I was actually able to touch it up and reuse most of the original uh, place that was on there. So the whole electrical system, everything uh, that identifies the wiring and everything is hand painted onto these little terminal places. Another thing the Germans did to identify the wire, they put wire markings on everything. Instead of just putting like a little paper uh, wrap thing with the number, which is pretty common on American airplanes, all the numbers have an aluminum little tiny piece of very soft wire, and they stamped the wire number into that uh, piece of aluminum, and they took that and they wrapped it around the sleeving and everything, and just bent it over itself and connected it to the wire. And that's how they labeled all the wires. And the good thing is on this airplane, all these are actually intact. I'm able actually to take these off and reuse them, which is actually saving a lot of time. Now, of course, a lot of people ask the question, how do you reference all this as far as electrical system and where everything goes? Well, we actually have a schematic that shows everything on uh, the 108. This schematic is actually had it enlarged from the manual, and the manual gives us everything here that tells us the location of all the pieces, all the wiring, where they go to, and as a reference, like I said, that C8 little terminal um, piece that we had, and you can actually look up on the schematic and you can find C8 and it tells you what wires go to it, uh, where those wires go to. Very simple electrical system, the one way it has. 
So all that is available. It's all a good reference to use. And there's also another chart in the book uh, on the next page that tells you where all the electrical components are located. Again, example, that C8 terminal block, you actually look on the left wing and it actually tells you where C8 goes. So if you didn't have all this as a reference, we're lucky that we have the complete airplane. If you didn't have all that, you can actually still go to the schematic, go to this, and you can find all that information and put it right back the way it's supposed to be. So making really good progress there. Another thing we found in the restoration supply catalog was a flexible conduit. The wing doesn't have any of this in it, but the fuselage has quite a bit. And it was actually uh, missing in some places and on the wing it's damaged. And I was like, where am I gonna find this stuff? Why? Well, I looked in this supply catalog and they actually had it. And guess what it's called? It's called German conduit. <laughs> which is just wild and it's the exact same material that's in the airplane you can just buy as many of it much of it as you want and so again thinking outside of the box uh, a lot of times for really old airplanes I'm talking pre-World War II you kind of have to look at different uh, suppliers and where you can find components to get these uh, things that you need so that's all come together wiring is almost finished you can see some of it it's uh, all back inside of here again and everything's cleaned up new wire installed and the next hurdle we have to do here is the landing light we mentioned in an earlier episode that the landing light probably was wiped out and damaged in the ground loop and when they put that all back together again um, they had made a homemade bracket that's just the bracket they made and not very nice but it, uh, it rivets right up inside of this rib right here and basically attaches uh, the landing light to that rib. Now, of course, we have to redo that. And luckily enough, I know somebody else was working on a 108, and he has sent me a, uh, a template. I'm able to, from that template, get some information. And what we like to do before we actually transfer it to a piece of material is we actually try to mock it up in cardboard. This is some um, uh, paper we use for doing stenciling. It's a nice rigid cardboard. And if you play around with this, um, you can actually mock up the piece, tape it all together so you know that once you have that information is correct and you have everything you need, you can take it and transfer it to the piece of sheet metal and then go ahead and make your part. So I'm in the process of doing that because, of course, I like to get that in place um, before we close it up also. So that is slowing us down a little bit too, but we're getting there. And so basically that's what's going on with the left wing. Hopefully... Uh, after the end of the year here, beginning of next year, we're going to get this wiring all finished up, get that landing light bracket put in there, and then at that point we'll be able to close up this wing. And then, of course, that's the goal is to finish the wing, get the wing tip on there, take it out of the fixture, and then move on to the right wing and do the same thing. So, making steady progress. And mentioning the landing light, let's go talk about some progress we made on that particular component. All right, everybody, we're going to talk about the, uh, the landing light. Uh, we mentioned that we have to make a bracket for it to go back on the airplane, but uh, the landing light itself was actually in pretty good shape. And for some reason, I, I don't think this is the original landing light that came out of the airplane because I'm pretty sure the original must have got wiped off the wing, but they probably found an original because this is an original um, German made in Berlin uh, landing light. Now, this piece was in pretty good shape, covered in a ton of paint, uh, stripped all the paint off of it and opened it all up. And the way this comes off is this actually has a, um, see a little button down here, and this actually twists off. And that comes off. And that allows you, of course, to get inside and change your light bulb. Now, amazing thing is actually before I took this whole thing apart and rebuilt it, I actually checked the landing light bulb, which is this piece right here. And it still works, <laughs> which I found pretty amazing. Um, pretty unusual looking bulb. I actually contacted my guy in Germany. He says he does have some spares. So if we do break it or it does burn out, we can get some more. But the fact of the matter, it does work. So clean that up and it's going to go back in there again. All the internal components to this have come out. These are all the support rings that go inside of here. All the pieces. You can actually adjust the angle of the light. But one of the things we had to redo that I'm in the process of trying to figure out how to do is it actually has a mirror behind it to reflect the light. Well, the mirroring on it, this piece was actually all worn off. And it's actually, this is the glass piece right here. This is the bulb sits right in the middle of this. This is the 
glass piece and there's mirroring all on the outside of this. Well, I had to remove all that. I actually decided, let me try this myself and I bought a mirroring kit. You can actually go online and buy a little mirroring kit to redo your mirrors in your home or an antique mirror. So I'm gonna to attempt to re-mirror this myself. And once it's all done, you paint a, a black paint on the back side of it. Hopefully that comes out uh, the way it's supposed to. The landing light lens itself, which is this beautiful yellow, that is in perfect condition. I just cleaned it up. I contemplated taking it out of there, but it's riveted in place. I was very uh, worried about drilling it and re-riveting it and I didn't want to break the piece, so I decided just to leave it in place and clean it up around there. Now, when I put this back together again, I decided to paint it. One of the paint schemes that we're kind of thinking about doing actually has the landing light as black. So I painted this portion black, and then I noticed some pictures of some original 108s that have this front portion unpainted. And I think they did this because it was a part that had to be grabbed and turned. Maybe they, didn't want, they wanted to keep this um, paint from getting scratched. So I decided to go that route, and I left this the natural material of the of the metal itself so that came out very nice and this piece is interesting in itself too in that it was actually formed on a spinning lathe this whole thing was made as a single piece of aluminum and if you've ever seen this done before you can go on youtube and look at this punch and spinning lathe and you can see all these different things that are made this was common to make uh, spinners and things that were shaped this way and what they would do is they would actually make a wooden forming block that was the same shape as this and a spinning lathe you clamp that forming block into it and then a piece of metal is clamped right here at this point and then as they, they take that whole thing metal and all and they spin it and there's a series of paddles and everything and they force that material over and they form it over top of that one form block it's an amazing thing to watch too especially when somebody has a lot of experience and when you can tell a part is done in a spinning lathe because there's a series of lines that are running this way through the entire piece so this piece was done that way, very difficult to reproduce that. But again, this part was in good condition. Another thing that I was able to save is the original data plate uh, to the landing light. This part I took off. Now, on some cases, like I think we mentioned in one of the other episodes, we had to actually have new data plates made for the wheel covers because they were just in very poor condition. But in this case, this placard here is actually in pretty decent shape. And the process to try to save that is just to remove the old black paint off of it, clean it up really well, spray it with a very light coat of just some light black sand uh, spray paint, let that dry, and then take like 600, 800 really fine sandpaper and just very carefully go across that because all this lettering and everything is raised. So you're able to knock that paint off of that, bring all that lettering back, and if you actually nick the black, you can go back and touch it up with a brush. Once that's all finished, give it a good clear coat and the part is saved. So nice to see that original uh, data play. And this company here, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, it's Pints. Uh, this company actually started out making uh, lighting for uh, railroad cars back in the early 1900s. And then they progressed into making light fixtures uh, for aircraft and other things, probably automobiles. And what's amazing is the company's still in business today and they actually make uh, warning lights for railroad systems in Germany. So pretty interesting that the company still exists and they're still making products today. So basically that's the progress on the landing light. Uh, it's a really cool piece. And hopefully once we get that mirror piece back in there again, we'll get it all assembled and it'll be another finished component that goes back on the airplane. So that's about it. And uh, let's have a little end of the year wrap up and we'll talk about uh, what we're gonna do next year. All right, everybody, uh, there we go for the last uh, update on the 108, uh, making steady progress, and hopefully uh, we're going to continue with this progress next year. I think our plan is to continue with the left-hand wing and finish that up, and then uh, continue with the right-hand wing. Uh, progress was a little bit slowed up this year because, of course, we were too, uh, off for two months for the pandemic, and it was kind of a rough year. But uh, I hope everybody out there has a, uh, a good Christmas, happy uh, New Year. Hopefully it's going to be a better year than it was this past uh, 2020. And with that, I'll leave you with one more thing. This is something that I wrote uh, a couple years back. I'm not even sure what I wrote this for. It was, I think I got dragged into some kind of uh, uh, neighborhood sit down or something and we had to write something about life and life beyond and, and being afraid of things. And so I, was kind of forced into writing this. I don't even consider myself much of a, of a writer, but I thought after I wrote this, it was pretty good. It's actually a, kind of a metaphor for what we do here, but it's also a metaphor for life in general and maybe the potential 
of what's beyond this uh, reality. And it's a little thing I call, that I wrote called, I will uh, fly again, so bear with me. Uh, there once was a little plane that was very proud. He was born from the many manifestations of the universe and constructed of the thoughts and dreams of man. He had been watched over by the hands of carrier mechanics and flown by the best pilots of the world. He had flown happy travelers across the globe to many amazing destinations. But now the little plane had noticed something was different. He was no longer shielded in a hangar and kept him protected from the elements. He had been abandoned outside and forgotten. His powerful engine was seized. His wheels and landing gear could no longer support his weight and his angel-like wings were damaged and beyond repair. No mechanics had come to ease his pain and no pilot had made him dance in the sky for many years. The little plane knew what was happening. He was dying and he was scared. He asked the gods who gave him life what would become of him. Would life be restored back to him and would he ever fly again? The gods answered and told him when he reaches the next realm he would be restored to all his glory. The little plane was confused. What of my broken engine? The god said you will be given an engine of greater power than you ever could imagine. What of my weak landing gear and my broken wings? Your gear will be restored to the, hold the weight of 50 planes, and you will be given wings that will let you soar higher and faster than ever before. And with this knowledge, the little plane that was no longer scared or afraid, for he knew his best flying days were yet to come. Hope you enjoyed that. It's uh, something I wrote, and uh, see you all next year.